Well, um, thank you for coming this afternoon. Welcome. Um, just a quick word. We're from a company called Microtech, 12 people, um, a development uh, software company, a software development company based in, uh, in France. And um, so we're going to talk today about uh, database replication. Okay, so um, it's, going to, it's, it's general, it's not specific to any uh, type of database. We're going to talk about um, uh, synchronizing data from, from one database to another, okay, over different, um, different things. So we'll, we'll dive in. I'll just give you a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about. First, we're going to look into um, the different approaches you can take when you're going to be uh, synchronizing uh, data between two different databases. Uh, we're going to look into some real-world situations, okay, four or five um, slides on situations that we have dealt with within the past uh, that you'll have to deal with probably also in the future. Um, we're going to give you some tips that we've gleaned from our own experience on um, what to do, what not to do um, in, in replicating data, uh, pitfalls, things that you might run into. Then we're going to talk to you about our, our product called the Copycat, which is a set of VCL components that we've uh, written uh, that have been around for about uh, eight or nine years now, um, and um, that can that can seriously uh, improve your uh, as a developer your your experience um, and your, your your ease of use in, in implementing um, uh, replication. And then we're going to do a hands-on demo. Uh, Jonathan here is with me. Um, we'll do a hands-on demo. Uh, within the IDE of how you can set this up easily, okay? So, let's go. Approaches to data synchronization, okay, so um, don't, uh, <laughs> don't shout when I write this, okay? Uh, full database copy, okay, so if you want to uh, move data to somewhere else, you can copy the database file and put it somewhere else, okay? So, this is, uh, <laughs> we're going from the simplistic to the more complex, okay? So I had to start with this. Now, this exists, you know, and um, obviously um, uh, the first question you want to ask when you're, when you're going to uh, start analyzing and designing such a system is um, uh, obviously do I need replication? Do I need something complex uh, to solve my problem? Or um, uh, if the database, if it's a catalog with all kinds of uh, uh, static information that's updated once a year, um, copy the file you know, once a year. And uh, okay, so obviously um, we're just going to go through uh, each each time. I'll just I'll just list a couple things. This is the quick and dirty approach. Okay, it's quick, it's dirty. Um, okay, for <laughs> occasional read-only access. Obviously, okay, it's not scalable, it's not flexible, it's not optimal. <laughs> okay. Um, the second approach is selective data pumping. Okay, so this is um, this means that you're going to be saying, okay, um, uh, we've got two two database files. Um, the database is updated, um, you know, two three times a year, uh, and we we don't want to have to copy files around. So we're going to basically go select the whole table, pump it over, and then replace uh, the local uh, version in the uh, database. Uh, with um, transactions so that it's nice and clean, but it's a small, relatively small table. Uh, there's no um, uh, no issues of, of, uh, of conflicts and stuff. Okay, so that's that's the point. Valid for tables that are quite small or quite static. Okay, not much changes. It's simple and reliable. Okay, you don't have to worry about um, whether you've got that record or not. You just get the whole thing. Um, you can mix and match. Okay, so that means you can say, well, this table. I'm going to just do a full, uh, uh, full pump, and this one I'm going to do something more fine. That's fine. Um, but it's still not optimal in terms of resource usage, OK? So bandwidth, um, uh, storage, and stuff like this, OK? And it's still read-only. That means that if you've, 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 you've gotten data from the remote database and you've got it on your local um, machine, uh, if you change this data, uh, you don't have a mechanism for moving back your changes in a logical and a, flexible way back onto the, the, the remote server. Okay, so now we're, we're, we're moving up in the, uh, the power and the flexibility, and um, we've got change flagging. Okay, so change flagging means that um, you, it uses a field to mark records that have changed. Okay, so basically um, uh, every time in your application you have a changed yes or no, Field okay. As soon as you change the client, um, the customer uh, um, record, you just set a flag. Yes, this has changed. And then next time you run your replication, you take select star where <laughs> uh, 
uh, changed equals yes, okay? This is this, this sort of mechanism, this is what we're talking about. So this is better resource management, okay? If you have a, a table with 50,000 customers and only five have changed, okay? There's no point pumping down the whole database uh, table um, when there's only five, five records have changed. It provides finer control than the previous methods. Um, it doesn't allow multiple node sync, okay? So if you have 10 remote users and one central database, if you're just flagging the, the record as being changed, uh, the first one replicates, uh, then the others won't get it, okay? So this, this won't work. Uh, it can also be complex and error prone, okay? Because um, you've got issues with, um, uh, with transactions uh, on the application layer and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, the, it's, not, the, it's not the silver bullet, it's not the bee's knees. You can do read-write, uh, but this is also complex, okay? It's me messy. Um, it, it's a, if, it's, if it's one table, small uh, sort of thing, you can get by with it. When it starts getting big, uh, it's a headache. Okay. And so the, the, for, the, the, the fourth and final method here we're going to be putting forward is, uh, is triggers. Okay. So um, in one way or another, uh, you want to use triggers to... Um, uh, detect and log changes. Okay, so basically, you're gonna on the on the database level, you're gonna you're gonna insert triggers saying um, every time I update, delete, insert a record, I'm going to go insert something into a log. Okay, a log table, and then this log will be able to be um, it's going to be a history of everything that's changed in my table, and I can then roll it back in whatever me method to apply it to a remote uh, remote table. Um, Okay, obviously you can change for multiple nodes, okay, so every time instead writing one line in the history, you can write for as many nodes as there are, okay, it's 10 nodes, you write 10 lines, each line, will, each node will get its own lines. You can, um, you can implement conflict management, okay, this, this makes it possible to implement conflict management because you have a history of everything that happened on both sides. So then when you, when you come to replicate, you can merge these and you can say, okay, um, play them back in order, find out what happened. And you can have a good idea of um, reliable. Um, you, you, you can do it. Okay, it's not uh, <laughs> automatic, and it's a database level approach, which means that um, if you're applying this onto your database, it's not like with your, when you're doing change flagging, uh, where this is your application that's going to come right in the field and say this has changed. This is right on the database level, so you're sure that if you've got a web app and a client um, client server application, that um, everything's going to get handled properly. Downside, it is complex to set up, okay? There's no, no doubt about that. It's, it's complex. You've got to be not only writing the changes, but you've got to be able to read them back reliably and apply them to the, to the, um, the remote or local databases, as the, as the case is. Okay? So far, just a quick uh, graph, okay, so you can understand where we're going. Simple and powerful, complex and easy. Um, okay? There's no, no, <laughs> no mystery here. Uh, this is a typical sort of a diagram, you know. The more easy something is, the less uh, powerful it tends to be. And, you know, if there was anything else, I think you would know about it by now. Okay, so we've seen, um, we've seen the ways you can implement synchronization. Now we're going to see some real-world situations where we're going to say, okay, how do we apply these? What, what is, you know, basically, um, what kind of things can we expect what's, from what scenarios? Um, so the first one I want to talk about is head office, branch office model. Okay, you have one database, the head office. You have two databases, one in each branch office. Okay, um, the data coming down from the head office is going to be uh, new products. Okay, you create a new product, you want it to go down to both branches so they can sell it. Um, you change the price list, uh, you know, three times a year. These prices get pushed down to the to the branch offices. And potentially data coming back up would be um, new orders, okay, placed from within the branch. Uh, these need to go up and get merged into the, the global um, company um, um, sales list. Changes to customer accounts, et cetera, okay. So this is just, so this is a typical sort of uh, situation where you want replication, okay. Um, and um, I've, as I put here, this configuration can be handled very, using various approaches, okay. So. Depending on your business need here, um, you know, uh, okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, pro you can't use the, uh, the full database copy, sorry. But, um, you know, you, you, can, you can maybe use change flagging if, if whatever, but, you know, 
um, this isn't the most complex sort of setup. Okay, um, multi-site distributed. Okay, so this is this is a bit more a bit more difficult because you've got three sites. And there's not necessarily one that's the master. Okay, it's three independent sites, and they all want to know every, about everything. Okay, they all share their data, and potentially, uh, if the customer is uh, doesn't know anything about computing and he's uh, stubborn, he wants to be able to change everything everywhere. Okay, and he wants to be able to move, go to another site, and update data from that comes from site A. Yeah. He wants it for tomorrow, okay? Um, and all databases need to be kept in sync, obviously. Okay, so simple. Here, when you're talking, when you get into this sort of scenario, uh, forget everything else and just focus on triggers and how you're going to implement this, okay? Uh, because you need to be able to merge stuff uh, reliably. Um, next, uh, next scenario is mobile users. Okay, so this is a very typical one. Probably most of you here have uh, mobile projects either on the go or you're either maintaining them or else you're planning to develop them soon. Well, the customer wants, uh, wants you to. Um, so you have a head office database. You have salesmen that work on the road and who are often disconnected. Um, they periodically connect, upload new sales, download catalog. Okay, so this is what salesmen do. Uh, the information goes up, team manager, he can uh, have a local uh, copy perhaps of the database with uh, changes applied. And probably the CEO, he wants to have, okay, so there's team manager, he could be several team managers with each their own team of salesmen, and the CEO, he sees the global uh, information from the database. He has some sort of iPad there on the diagram. Okay, each part downloads different parts, e each, uh, each platform has different parts of the database. Okay, same thing. You're getting into complex uh, situations. You want to be able to um, use triggers for this. <coughs> okay, here's another, um, another situation. All these situations are si situations we've applied our uh, replication to. We've have, we have customers in these, in these situations and they've asked us for things. So uh, we've, we've tried to you know, pull, um, pull from our own experience. Um, live database mirroring, okay, so this is a typical application where you have a database and a web application in a data center somewhere and you've told the customer that it, it will not break down, it's just you know, top quality, it's got a redundant power supply, it's got everything you need, and then next morning uh, it's unavailable and there's a hard disk or some network error or something like this. Okay, so we have this in Paris. We have all these users all over the world that are connecting to it, you know, business critical application. Um, and so then, of course, the, the idea is to, to make in a separate data center a complete copy. Okay, so you can just, if something goes wrong, disaster recovery, you can just switch the DNS, switch it over to the other server, and you've got nothing to do. Okay, you go fix the first one. Okay, we'll put that one in Rome. Um, that database needs to be able, available at all times. Okay, so for the web app, you may only have you know, a couple releases a, a year, so it's easy just to release them to both servers, it's okay. But for the database, um, uh, you want to be able to be able to switch over within, you know, five, ten minutes onto the new server. Uh, you want the database to be up to date, okay? So here, this is where we need to set up replication between these two databases in the background, so that every time this change is applied to the first one, they're going to be going over nice and, nice and slowly or nice and uh, evenly into the remote uh, backup uh, mirror, okay? So this is, this is a mirroring. Okay, so this obviously re requires trigger-based, um, you know, um, we, we had a situation like this. Uh, initially, the database was quite small. We were using Backup Restore, okay? The database, when it was three, 400 megabytes, uh, every, every hour, we're just moving uh, Backup Restore, automated, send it over to the other ser server, uh, restore it, and then, you know, you, you, you had this. Uh, the customer became, uh, the, the, the application grew. The database is now um, over four gigabytes. Um, it's too big to handle in this way. Um, we did this. <laughs> we did this before, but um, and, and the, the customer is more uh, demanding in terms of uh, one hour is too much. Okay, too much has happened in an hour. So we we set up a replicator that um, in real time, just every time there's a change in the database, moves it over, moves it over. So it's it's constantly uh, logging and and uh, moving these logs into the the remote database. So if we um, if we have an outage. Um, we can just flip the switch and we've got it uh, at a remote uh, area. 
Okay. This this this, um, this fifth one is is similar to the the, the fourth. It's um, for load balancing. Okay. This can be. This is a sort of a, um, uh, a situation that um, not not very often used, um, but it, it, it's 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 easy to implement with replication. You have a database that's overloaded because you have, um, for example, uh, uh, data coming in from production, uh, data coming in from sales, and you've got the reporting department that's pulling data out, okay, to do statistics, to do reporting and stuff like this. And so, um, in the, you know, you have to analyze the, the situation. But here, uh, what, what could be sensible is to say, okay, we're going to replicate certain tables, okay, into a secondary database. Um, which will serve just for reporting, okay? That way, your um, the reporting always has a, has an up to date, fresh uh, database, uh, but um, uh, it can you can store it on a separate server, okay? They're not making any changes; they're just updating. They're, I mean, they're just um, they're just reporting, okay? Doing queries on the on the on the tables, and so um, this, this this sort of approach can make sense. Okay, a simple database copy could allow read-only, sure. Um, if you want to do something finer, if the database is too big, if you just want three tables, okay. Think, uh, think triggers and think, uh, think replication, think our, uh, our solutions. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through some tips. Okay, and we'll have um, got some time at the end for the for questions and answers after Jonathan's done the. Um, the hands-on demo. Okay, so first tip I'd like to say is um, it's good to design your database. It, it, I mean, this is this is in the best case scenario to design your application and your database with replication in mind. Okay, because um, when you're coming into it afterwards, you may come upon some design issues that make it difficult to um, to replicate easily. Okay. Uh, I'll give some examples of that. Making reliable primary keys. Okay, either, uh, what, what do I mean by this? I mean that if you have, if you're, you have a unique uh, one, one field primary key at the, at the master um, and you want to merge in data from several branches, um, you're going to have to uh, handle the fact that, um, that if, if, it's, if the primary keys are, are, are made by generators on the remote sites, when they come back up, there may be conflicts with primary keys. Okay, so what you want to do is either Double primary key with an ID that's generated, plus a node name, okay, which is which is unique to each site. That way, you know when you're com when they're coming up, you know there's going to be no problem with um, uh, with with key violations, okay. Uh, 